We are three weeks away from SummerSlam, and we're on Monday Night Raw. Montez Ford has been presented with a unique opportunity. Earlier in the night, Angelo Dawkins was taken out by Theory after he was body-checked over the announce table in their six-man match last week. But the kicker is, if Ford wins, he's going to be entered into the US title match at SummerSlam, making it a triple threat match. And as the match is heating up, Theory is looking to cheat. He's looking under the ring for his Money in the Bank briefcase that he's hidden. But while the referee is distracted by Ford, Dawkins appears, comes through and drops Theory. Ford sees the chance and nails a massive frog splash for the win. Montez has got himself a shot at the United States Championship. Later in the night, we see Ford thanking Angelo for the assist, but the mood changes. When Ford suggests that he wants to actually try and do this the right way, he says, I don't want to be the guy that has to rely on others to win singles gold. Angelo's a little bit standoffish and he says, so what are you saying? You don't want me around? Montez says, no way, I want you around, but maybe just getting involved in the matches, maybe we should do our own thing. Just for now, just until SummerSlam, we'll see how it goes. Dawkins says, yeah, I, I get it, it makes sense. Maybe I'll get some singles matches as well and I'll see what's going on there, but it's kind of weird. Montez agrees, he says, yeah, but let's just try it. You never know. We're still good, right? And Angelo says, yeah, for sure, I mean, always. Montez is on his way to SummerSlam for a United States Championship match, and now Angelo has taken a singles match to test the waters, and he's up against Otis. But of course, Chad Gable is at ringside, and of course, Chad Gable is meddling in the match. It's essentially two on one for the whole time. Gable creates enough of a distraction that Otis can capitalize. He then nails him with a splash, and Dawkins gets pinned. And of course, Montez Ford, nowhere to be seen because they agreed to try their own thing. It's a terrible start for Dawkins and he is not happy about the loss, but the feeling would be so much more different for Montez later in the night when he faced Ezekiel. Ford was as impressive as ever, and we see him get a massive singles win. And right after the match, Montez walks through the curtain into the backstage area and he's met by Dawkins, who congratulates him on the win. And Montez is so excited, he thanks Angelo, but he doesn't even really acknowledge the fact that Angelo lost earlier in the night, and he walks off. Dawkins just watches him leave, and then he says under his breath, I guess it's going well for some. The week before SummerSlam sees Montez in another high-profile singles match. The competition is ramped up this time. He's facing former US champion Riddle. The match is an absolute banger. Ford has really elevated his level, and Riddle, of course, is on a whole other level himself. We then see Seth Rollins get involved. He and Riddle, of course, have had a massive issue lately, and he's looking to distract Riddle. It works. Rollins jumps off the top rope, and while he's distracted, Ford runs up behind him, rolls him up, and picks up a massive upset win. Backstage after the match, we again see Dawkins, and he isn't as full of praise this time. He says, oh, so you'll take an assist from Seth, but not from me. You're happy with that? This is, this is us doing our own thing? Ford says, whoa, 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 hold on. I didn't know he was coming out. You think I set that up? You think I, you think I deal with Seth Rollins? And Angelo says, I don't know what to think anymore. He's got a match to get to himself. And Dawkins is in the middle of that match with Gable. He's trying to get revenge, but of course, Otis is at ringside. Gable is distracting the referee while Otis slams Dawkins against the LED ring post. But Montez has seen enough. He sprints down to ringside. He goes after Otis, but Otis moves and Montez nails Dawkins. Otis throws Montez over the barricade and then Gable picks up the pieces. He nails Dawkins with the chaos theory in the ring and he picks up the win. It's disaster for Angelo Dawkins. After the match, Dawkins and Ford are in the ring and Montez is apologizing. He says, I was just trying to help. And Dawkins isn't having it. He says, you've changed. I just, I don't know anymore, man. Dawkins walks off. Ford is standing alone in the ring. And then from behind, he gets dropped by Theory. Theory beats the hell out of him. And Dawkins stops at the top of the ramp. He can hear what's going on, but he doesn't look back. It's time for the triple threat match and it's well underway. Lashley defending against Theory and Montez Ford. 
Theory has used everything he can to keep Lashley at bay. And finally, he's able to put Lashley through the announce table and the champion is down. Ford gets on top. He goes to the top rope. As he's about to leap off, we see Angelo Dawkins hit the ring. He tells Ford to do it. He says, jump off, hit that frog splash and win that title. Ford does it. He leaps off. But instead of landing on Theory, he gets caught by Dawkins. Dawkins has left Ford in a heap. Unbelievable. Theory is thinking he can capitalize as well. But he's about to snake in and pin Ford when he gets smashed by a spear. Lashley has recovered. He's back up. And he pins Theory and retains the US title. And as big a win as that is, it's not even the biggest story of the match. The Street Profits seem like they are no more. The next night on Raw, Montez is looking for Dawkins. He's scouring the backstage area. He runs in to Bobby Lashley. Montez asks Lashley if he's seen Dawkins anywhere. And Lashley says that he hasn't, but he wants him to know that if he wants another shot at the title, he's down because he doesn't want it to be like that. He says, as much as it benefited me, the fact that Angelo would put his nose in my business kind of pissed me off. Ford says he's more than down, but he's kind of pissed off at Angelo as well. So he wants to find him before he worries about anything else. And as the night goes on, Montez is shown multiple times backstage looking for Dawkins towards the end of the night. He finds him, but he finds him the hard way. Montez is assaulted and Dawkins says, you want answers? You want to know why? You should know why. But in case you want me to make it clearer, listen in next week. This is a different Angelo Dawkins. He's violent, he's angry. And that carries over to the week after when he's finally ready to talk. He says, people have been asking why. Why did I do that to Montez? Well, I ask you a question. Ask yourself this. Why did he do that to me? The moment he got a whiff of singles gold, he dropped me. The moment he got a whiff of singles gold, all our tag gold was out the window. And let's not pretend like you all haven't wanted this for years. How many times have I read on Twitter? Oh, Montez is a single star. He's the Sean of the two. Montez should be out on his own. He's way better than Angelo. Well now, you got what you want. But it comes as a price now, you're going to find out who really carried this team because you'll be watching me carry him out in a body bag. And as Angelo has finished berating Montez, we see Ford sprint down the aisle and he tries to get at Dawkins. He slides in the ring and they start brawling. But Dawkins is too powerful. He dominates Ford and he leaves him laying again. We are just a couple of weeks away from Clash at the Castle and Dawkins is in the ring. He says he's sick and tired of talking. He wants to fight Montez in Wales. He wants to put him behind him so he can focus on his new solo career that Montez so desperately wanted. And speaking of the solo career, I said I'm sick of talking. So I'm out here to fight and I dare someone, anyone in the back to come down here and get some. It's Bobby Lashley, he accepts the challenge. Lashley comes down and Dawkins says, oh, I see how it is. You and Tez are boys now, right? Well, if anything, you should be thanking me because I saved that little title of yours, just like I saved his ass so many times over the years. And Lashley is done talking too. The bell rings and they go at it. Dawkins with this new edge is a real different kind of beast. He actually pushes Lashley so far that the match spills to the outside. Dawkins has lost it. He starts beating the hell out of Lashley. And the referee actually counts them out. Dawkins doesn't even care, eventually slamming him into the steel steps. We finally see Montez Ford run down the ramp and he tries to get at Dawkins, but Dawkins runs away. He says, oh, I guess you'll come and save your boy, but you won't come and save me. Well, guess what? There's no saving you in Wales. Dawkins is a ruthless and different animal right now. He's on the warpath, and that path continues through to the week before Clash at the Castle, where he actually has a US title match against Bobby Lashley, who after the assault called him out. And once again, Dawkins is in control. Lashley is in danger of losing the championship. Lashley is down. Dawkins is calling Lashley to his feet to finish him off. 
but from the sky comes Montez Ford. He flies off the top rope, nails a massive crossbody on Angelo Dawkins, and they start brawling all over the ringside area and all the way up the ramp. Once one of the most popular tag teams in the world, now bitter enemies. The crowd and everyone watching at home is almost disappointed to see how far they've fallen. But who will rise at Clash at the Castle? Well, we didn't have to wait long to find out. And we witnessed one of the most anticipated matches on the card. And you can't even call it a wrestling match. It's a straight up fight. The Welsh crowd is eating it up. They're 100% on the side of Montez Ford. They feel like he's been wronged by Dawkins. But Dawkins doesn't care. He's dominating the match. He's got Ford exactly where he wants it. And we're in the dying stages. But as we've seen countless times in Street Profits matches, Montez is putting on a clinic. He's building a head of steam. He hits a trio of dives on Dawkins. Montez is on fire. He throws Angelo in the ring. He's looking for the frog splash. But Dawkins pops up. He's on another level. And now he's calling him on. He says, you did this. This was your choice. He lifts him up. Montez sees it coming. He knows him better than anyone. He reverses it into a face buster. He's got the opening. He goes to the top. And we see him say, I want the smoke. Montez Ford has narrowly overcome his former teammate and brother. Ford has picked up the massive singles win. And we know that the sky's the limit. But not just for him, for both men. And if you like this scenario, you should check this one out next.